About two years ago, I was at home uh, lighting the fire, and as I bent down, I, my knee locked, and the pain was excruciating. You sometimes feel like you're on the bottom of the pile and your needs are not being met, and how do you cope with all of this stuff that's going on? Kevin was absolutely scrupulous that he would always come with me when I went to hospital and I would always be lying in the hospital saying please go home, you've got to go home and get some sleep and he would never do that. The issue for me really was that every time I bent down, so kneeling or just crouching down or you know day to day bending down, the knee would lock and it would be really uncomfortable and, and it would be really embarrassing as well, you know, trying to uh, kneel to pray at church would awkward because I couldn't get back up again. Ministry is very demanding as well and um, that you can have some relationships that can be quite difficult and some people that it's hard to manage and that there's a, always far more to do than you can ever do so there's a, a lot of work and a lot of people's expectations and that can be really difficult to manage sometimes. The health and well-being of the clergy is the main concern of St Luke's Healthcare for the Clergy. Every year we help hundreds of clergy like Nikki and Derek and relatives like Sue. We want them to be able to use all their energy and talents in their ministry and serve the community to their full potential. When clergy are ill, we can help with speedy diagnosis or a second opinion from one of our honorary consultants. St Luke's Healthcare for the clergy enhances the health and well-being of Anglican clergy through helping with physical or mental healthcare issues or by providing training, tools and strategies to help them deal with the inevitable pressures that they will face. We work with over 100 eminent honorary consultants around the country to offer medical and surgical investigations and procedures, physiotherapy, convalescent post-operative care, dental surgery, psychiatry. So I went to the, to the doctors, I went to the, to the hospital, saw a consultant and um, they used all very nice words and, and reassured me that it wasn't a huge issue. Words like um, it was wear and tear on the knee, which I interpreted uh, as being I was getting old, basically. <laughs> So I was on this waiting list um, to have a procedure sorted out. I was told it'd be about a six to eight month waiting list. Um, it came to the, the week of, of the procedure to take place and I was given a phone call to say that it had been cancelled, which um, obviously was disappointing and I was then told that it'd be another possible four or five months before um, I'd be seen. Um, I had a, an inflamed gallbladder. Um, which started one night um, with chest pains in the middle of the night, so that was a bit alarming. Um, and I ended up uh, in hospital, um, and then I was diagnosed, which was a relief, actually. But they also said you need to have the gallbladder removed. Um, there was a very, very long waiting list. I had um, episodes of pain about once a month, and um, the last episode of pain I had was really um, very severe and I ended up in an ambulance with a morphine drip and it was all quite, um, quite trying really. I had heard, heard about St Luke's but very vaguely um, and I wasn't sure exactly what they did or how they operated um, but I wondered if they did help clergy spouses. So I rang Hazel at St Luke's and she was so kind and she also said that I would see somebody within three weeks and I did which was completely magical. And the process was extremely quick. Within two weeks I'd, had, I'd got an appointment to see a consultant up in London and within two weeks of I've seen the consultant, I was ready uh, and had a date for the operation. I had a pre-operative test on the same day, so I had everything dealt with and done on that same day and also met the anaesthetist and then they booked me in to come back a very short time later and so I couldn't get over it really, it was really extraordinary. The procedure um, went uh, really well, I was only in for, for one night, came out the next day, was walking um, immediately uh, back to work within uh, three or four days 
and uh, I've had no issues with my knee whatsoever. It's been brilliant and uh, no more embarrassing kneeling down episodes either. As well as physical and mental health care services, St Luke's offers preventive services that build well-being. Clergy say some of their biggest pressures are other people's expectations, long and irregular hours, struggling to take time off, worries about money and housing, adopting an unhealthy lifestyle. This is an issue for, for the 21st century. I think most people are affected by these issues. But I do think that for clergy in particular, because of this sort of multiple pressures that they have to deal with, I think the value of this kind of training uh, is even more important because it allows them to not only stay healthy, but I think continue to do the job that they were called to do. Um, and I guess ultimately to, to serve God. One of the main uh, stresses that people mention is about isolation and this feeling about being alone and having to do everything yourself. I've had people talk about you know, how they are the leader and the spiritual advisor and the tea lady and you know, the person who fixes the roof and the list goes on and on. And I think the other one which is actually mentioned really well on the St Luke's website, is about the feeling that one should always be available uh, for one's parishioners. We believe prevention is better than cure. Nikki benefited from training provided by St Luke's via her diocese. I got an email through from the person who organises all the training in the diocese saying that they were running a day for clergy that was on stress and resilience and that's something that I was really interested in. So before, I would just ignore my own needs and they were not, uh, not something that I considered. And I think now I've learnt that I need to take care of myself because when I'm in a good place, I've got more to offer to other people. So my husband noticed that change in me and he said it's just like when you're on an aeroplane, you would have just put everybody else's air mask on and you wouldn't have even thought to put one on you until you couldn't breathe at all. Whereas now, you're putting your mask on first and then putting other people's masks on. So I'm looking after myself much better, so I'm much more aware of my well-being. So I now go to the gym regularly. I've joined Weight Watchers and I've lost nearly four stone. Our resilience training offers strategies to give insight into stress, develop an action plan to manage pressure. This training is available through the diocese as half-day or full-day courses. As well as resilience courses, Luke's now offers help with setting up reflective practice groups. They meet with a professional facilitator and in those groups where there is absolute confidentiality, um, people can bring exactly what they want to bring from their working life, their professional life and also from their personal life because those two aspects obviously impact on one another. So it's not just a support group, it's a place of learning and development. Uh, no senior staff are party to any of the uh, material that is discussed at the groups whatsoever. I think it's a very uh, beneficial thing for dioceses to adopt this because it helps their, their clergy grow in confidence, it helps the clergy be more confident in um, being with others and in a group context. Um, and it generally, um, not least, conveys to clergy that the diocese uh, wants to care for them and their development in this, in this way. St Luke's reflective practice groups provide a confidential space for reflection and learning, help to define and support healthy boundaries, build emotional well-being, reduce feelings of isolation and loneliness, work together as a small group for two years, I know St Luke's has been a great benefit for me. I've witnessed firsthand the tremendous impact it's had on me and my family and my life and I'm really grateful for that. It's made an enormous difference to me because 
uh, I don't have to go to bed being frightened <laughs> that I might wake up and have to wake Kevin up and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yes, it's made a massive, massive difference to me. It's made a big difference to Kevin because he can um, know that I'm, I'm fine um, and then we can get back to our normal rhythm of life. I'm really glad that the diocese gave me this opportunity because it's had a huge impact upon me and upon my ministry and I really needed some help and support in looking at how I manage stress and in building my strength and my resilience and it's, it's been really transformational and I'm really glad that we've had the opportunity. St Luke's Healthcare for the Clergy is here to help Anglican clergy and their families. We rely entirely on the generosity of our supporters to continue our work. Please help us to continue our work with clergy like Nikki and Derek. A donation or a legacy would make a huge difference to St Luke's. Parishes and schools can give by taking part in Thank Your Vicar Week every October. It's a way of saying thank you to the clergy for everything they do for the community. Please give so that St Luke's can be here for the clergy when they need us.